Hello and welcome to Blockchain Silver, the place where we analyze what in the world is going on in crypto. Today we're going to talk about 1990, the digital economy begins. Warning, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment purposes only. It is best to do your own due diligence, form your own conclusions, and invest based on your opinion of the market. Cryptocurrency markets are highly speculative and may lose value. Be safe out there. Now this is me talking. In the short amount of time that I've been on this planet, I have witnessed the death of one economy and the birth of another, all at the same time. How do we spot the top of a grand super cycle, or just a super cycle? Both of them are long, both of them are 100 plus years old. And what do you look for? Here are some characteristics of the top of a super cycle and grand super cycle. 70 to 100% market participation. So this means a lot of people own it, a lot of people have it. It's widely available, it's out there, it's easy to get, it's easy to use and it's extremely efficient. That's another key indicator as well. Also, a mature market. This could be a market that's, I'd say it's about 100 plus years old. And of course, that's what we got here. No new participants. So you've, if you've got 70 to 100% of the population already using it or buying it, you don't really have room for new growth unless you expanded throughout the universe that would be about it and also another top or indicator of a top of a grand super cycle or a super cycle is that it can also get very expensive to use near the end because it gets inefficient or there's too many laws and regulations around it that now it takes more government regulation and oversight, or people have already begun to jump ship and move on to something else, and they no longer use it, and so things can rise. So just to use steam power as an example, steam power, it was invented around 1698, 1700, but it took a while to get it really to where it was efficient and effective. And steam had really had its heyday from 1800 to about 1910. And then the internal combustion engine and diesel engine both came about. And they were more efficient. Of course, they took time as well to use. But right at about the time where this was maxing out at the year 1900, 1910, the internal combustion engine then came about. And then when the internal combustion engine had its glory days from about, you could say 1910 to 2000 or maybe 1910 to 2010 or, or 2020. But I believe that the top for the internal combustion engine or, or just for this market in general was sometime around the year 2000. There were... 70 to 100 percent a lot of people had vehicles it was a mature market it was over 100 years old or close to 100 years old and you have more participants that owned vehicles than people that didn't and so and then also what does it do vehicles get expensive and so now i see electric being the next thing for probably the next hundred years or so and in the year 1900, there was steam power. It was quite a bit, it was readily available. 2000, okay, let me restart this. In, in 1900, steam power was, was available all over, but you couldn't find internal combustion engines. They weren't very common. They were just still being thought of and manufactured. So this was available, this was not. Now, at the year 2000, this was available, but how many electric cars could you find? 
Probably not many. I think there was maybe one that GM worked on in the late mid to late 90s, but for the most part, electric was not available. And if it was, it probably wasn't efficient. It probably wasn't cheap. And uh, this, this was probably a lot more easier to find and to buy and to, to get fuel for. Same thing with shopping malls. Shopping malls in the year 2000, it was a, a whole lot easier to go to the shopping mall if you needed jeans or a pair of jeans, I'm sorry, jeans or a pair of shoes or just whatever, or just to go to any store, a hardware store, a supermarket, wherever, a mall. It was easier to go here than it was to go online. And malls were everywhere, stores were everywhere, and the internet was still being, it was around, but it was still being thought up and it was still being created. And so I call this time right here, this is the coal, gas, and oil time of the United States. So if we chart this out on Elliott Wave, it looks something like this. And so from, now America, Wall Street, 1798, 1800, somewhere around here it started. And from here up until about here, this was the steam engine. Then from about 1900 to 2000, this was the internal combustion engine time frame. So now from 2000 or 2010, until 2100 or 2110 or could even be who knows 2030 or 2130 I mean I see something like these hundred year cycles in personal use for transportation and so it's possible that electric is probably the future it could it could be the future and you may be thinking well electric vehicles they're expensive. They're, they're more expensive than these, yes. But what happens when the day comes where maybe batteries, where there's a new battery technology, and now all of a sudden they're not as expensive anymore. And so a lot of the cost of an electric vehicle is in the battery production. The rest of the vehicle is, is not that expensive to produce. And so will internal combustion engines get cheaper to produce? Probably not. Will fuel become easier to find? Probably not. Will electric become easier to get? I would think so with the rise of windmills and solar farms and renewable energy. I, I see a lot of electric becoming the next thing. And so, of course, I could always be wrong, but... This is just what I see over the last, from what's happened in the past over the last 100 years, 1800 to 1900, 1900 to 2000, and 2000 going into 2100. And so we also know this because normally the stock price of these old industries, will it'll find a top and it'll never find that top ever again. And so just like how a lot of the, the railways went out of business when things converted over to steam power and to in or things from steam power converted over to the diesel and internal combustion engine then trains were they weren't needed as much they were still needed and they're still used today but they they had found their top and so a lot of those old railway industries and stocks they found their top and they came down and so this is just one. This is Ford Motor Company here. I pulled this this morning. Trading at about $36, $37 right around the year 1999, 2000. And so if you would have bought Ford Motor Company at the top in 2000, or even just give or take five years in 90, 1995 or 2005, it was still trading around maybe the... The $15 area 
And now if you owned it today, it's going for $9.24. So over the last 20 years, would you have made anything investing in in Ford? No, you wouldn't. You'd have you'd be down. You would have if you'd have put a thousand dollars into Ford at thirty-seven dollars, or even if we just say an average of maybe twenty bucks, you, your portfolio would be down by fifty percent today. And so this is another key indicator that I look at: big, large, long cycles, and it. A lot of the other ones look the same. And so the auto companies going into the next decade, if I'm sorry, into the next century, if they want to survive, they're going to have to come up with new strategies and new things and new ideas. So as I see the death of one economy, I see the rise of a new one. And so you figure... The World Wide Web was created in 1990, 1991. Of course, just like America and the stock exchange here, you can trace it back even farther to the 1700s. But this is about when, when things first began, began being traded. And so this was about the time frame that the World Wide Web was just starting to become available. And so, brand new market, brand new entrance, market participation is low. And so, if we saw something similar with the digital economy, the internet, everything digital, it should affect every single facet of our life. And from, you figure, social media to search engine which this would be Google, Facebook, Amazon, and really just everyday life. We, you may think that we have seen it all with technology, but I don't think we've even scratched the surface yet. How many people do you know that have gotten a pizza delivered by a drone? Or they've gotten their lawn cut by an autonomous lawnmower? Or they got a taxi, they got a ride in a taxi from a driverless automobile. How many people do you know that that's happened to? I don't, I don't think I know anybody that's got a pizza delivered from a drone or gotten a taxi ride in, in an autonomous vehicle or any of that stuff. And so if this being any indication of the steam and internal combustion engine economies this being the difference here in the years, this means that we are still at the beginning of a, of a whole brand new super cycle or grand super cycle of a digital economy and that the internet and all this stuff, this is just the beginning and that we haven't even began to scratch the surface yet. And so just like how we had these booms and busts that are quite normal and healthy in capitalism, we are going to have the same exact boom and busts in the digital economy. This could be oversaturization, the overuse of credit, the expansion of credit, the expansion of more and more websites, or whatever it is, things that we haven't even thought about yet, the expansion of. And what happens is it gets so overutilized and ex it expands so quickly that there's a retraction. Maybe some websites or some services go out and just like what causes these, these booms and busts here, there were a lot of oil refineries and a lot of them needed to go. And that's exactly what happened. There was a lot of companies and also too, they're, they're, it becomes a lot of fraud and a lot of waste in these boom times. And so these, they clear all of that out. All that fraud, waste, and abuse gets cleared out. And they're good and they're healthy. And once it gets cleared out, the economy can move on. And so if we saw something similar with the digital economy, this is what we're looking at. And will there be booms and busts? Yes, there will be. 
This here, this would be the beginning. This here would be the tech boom. And, and you could even say that the year 2000 and 2020 could be in here somewhere, 2025, we could see, we could see a contraction in, in the next decade. And so this is what I see happening over the next decade with the digital economy. Amazon. So if you would have bought Ford in the year 2000, over the next 20 years, you would have lost half of your portfolio. With the digital economy, Amazon was trading at, even at, let's just say you, you owned Ford and you sold it at the time and you bought during a high, high time. I think Amazon was going for about $100 at this time. Well, still, over the next 20, so you would have lost quite a bit, 80 or 90% of your portfolio, but it traded for almost upwards of $2,000 in the same exact time frame that Ford has died and came down 20 years your $100 still would have done a 20 times increase. It would have went up by 20 times. So while if you stayed in, in an old dying economy, you would have lost half. And even if you bought at a high, at a market high of a brand new, brand new economy that was just beginning to sprout, you still would be up over 20 times. And so this is why to me, it's important that your positioning throughout your life, where you are, what you are invested in and what you are involved in, you want to be at the beginning of a brand new market, at a market that is just beginning to take off. This is not the end, I guarantee it. Let's look at another one. Facebook, $185 trading today. Now Facebook, came out I think in 2012 2013 I can't remember the exact year but if if this is 17 15 yeah that's probably about 13 and I think it came out at at $40 or something and it got cut in half and went down to 20 but still even if you would have bought on the day it came out at $40 yeah you would have lost over the next six months year but then another six months or year after that you would have been right back up to, you, you would have shown a positive from your original investment. And from there, from the $20, it touched 200. And so you still, or I'm sorry, if you bought at the 40 to the 200, you still, today, even today, you'd still be at, at three or 400% of an increase. And so this is another technology company, just like Amazon. You know, nobody bought. I didn't buy here or here, and I still don't own Amazon today, but I'm just using this as an example. Same thing with Facebook. You'd still be up three or 400%. This here is Google. It's been renamed to Alphabet today, trading at $1,246. And so this was, this if this was 2011, this is 2007, this is probably about 2005, maybe 2006. Even if you would have bought in any one of these areas here at, this was probably, I don't know, $250. Any, through any time in the last, from 2005 to 2012, 2013, it traded at 250 bucks. And so now from here, from this new digital economy, where's it at now? It's up, so in the year 2005, which of course Ford, at 2005 was about $15, and today it, you'd still be down, so you wouldn't be up anything. Whereas with Google, from about the same area to today, from 250 bucks to 1250, you'd still be up four, five, six hundred percent. And so what I'm getting at is that this new digital economy that's rising. This is just the beginning. You may think that 
everybody's got cell phones, everybody's got the internet, everybody, a lot of people use Amazon and Facebook, and there really isn't much more to go for this economy, but there is. This is just the beginning. We have only scratched the surface. We are only a couple of decades into this. Even if you want to say we're three decades into this, this could easily be a 100 to 200 year old economy when this is done. And so here's how you spot the beginning of a grand super cycle. Less than 2% users, a new market, 10 years old or less, and it's inexpensive, meaning it's it can be cheap to use or it's inexpensive to enter into the stock. And so think about some things where there's less than 2% users. How many people today use Bitcoin? Not very many. How much of our police force or firefighters are drones? How many people get stuff delivered by drones? Have you seen anybody getting their lawn cut or anything by an autonomous mower, lawnmower? Nobody. And these are just examples. I could go on and on and on with hundreds of things, how technology is going to change our life and what it's going to do for us. I see a day where, where people will have these and it'll, ha it'll help them around their house or apartment or it'll help the elderly to be able to do things. We haven't even began to scratch the service, surface of this market. So this is the sign of a new market. This is the sign of an old market. This is when markets die. This is when new markets are born. That's it for today. If you liked the video, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I want to thank you for coming over to Blockchain Silver, and remember to stay safe out there.